Hi guys, today I am here with my Victober TBR. So I'm going to show you all the books that I am hoping to read during October for the Victorian October Readathon. I am one of the hosts this year, as I've been for the past few years, along with Katie from Books and Things, Ange from Beyond the Pages, and Kate Howe, and I look forward to this every year. So I'm going to show you the six books that I have chosen, but we might get to five and my voice might be completely gone, so we'll see how that goes. I had a really difficult job deciding what I was going to read during October because there was so many books that I could have chosen from but I decided to go for lots of new to me authors or books that I've wanted to read for a long time and might have featured on previous TBRs but never read at the time and think that I should probably read them now. Even though I have chosen these six books too there's other stuff I want to read like articles and non-fiction and I'll probably read some poetry in there too so you might want to watch my vlogs throughout the month of October to see what I am reading and this might change so I might decide to read something else too but we'll see I'm hoping that I will read all of these books so let's start by talking about Deerbrook by Harriet Martineau I was reading about Harriet Martineau recently because she knew Charlotte Bronte around the 1850s and I was reading Elizabeth Gaskell's The Life of Charlotte Bronte which is a biography of Charlotte by Elizabeth Gaskell and so there was quite a few references to Harriet Martineau to know and I realised that I'd never read any of her writing before. I've wanted to read Dear Brooke for a long time because it does sound like the type of Victorian novel I really love. So it was published in 1839 right at the beginning of Queen Victoria's reign. So I think that in terms of all my other reading it offers a lot of context. If I'm reading something set in the 1890s it's going to be very different to this because a lot happened in the years that went by and that changes so much. So I thought that it would add had a lot of context but it was also about English domestic life so think about your Elizabeth Gaskell type novels think about how domestic life is portrayed in the Victorian period and that is what Deerbrook is this is about two sisters Hester and Margaret who go to stay with their cousin and his wife and they meet the village apothecary and there's lots of speculation that one of them will get married to him and one of them does and it is a very unhappy marriage I love books like this even though they can be quite heartbreaking at times and there can be lots of serious things going on in them. I love this look at everyday life during the Victorian period and I also think that this one will be great because it was quite a difficult time for the novel. If you think about lots of the Victorian great novelists like the Bronte sisters, George Eliot, Elizabeth Gaskell, Thomas Hardy, they were writing from the 1840s onwards and so in this period in the late 1830s and even the early 1840s was quite difficult there wasn't any really strong novels out there and novelists weren't really as popular they weren't at their height there were lots of earlier great novelists and lots of later great novelists but this was quite a tricky time to be a novelist but Harriet Martineau was writing for such a long time she wrote lots of non-fiction and travel writing and she was a pretty remarkable woman so I'm really looking forward to this being my introduction to her words so I'm going to read Deerbrook for the challenge to read a novel over 500 pages um, and that one comes in at just under 600 but the other part of Katie's challenge this year is to read a book under 200 pages. So I'm cheating slightly and I'm going to read The Mystery of Mrs Blencaro by Mrs Oliphant which is I think a collection of three stories that does come into under 200 pages so this is going to be my read for that part of the challenge. Margaret Oliphant was 21 when she published her first book and she was famous during the Victorian period mainly because she was such a prolific writer. She wrote over 100 novels and used novel writing to support herself financially. She's perhaps best known for the Chronicles of Carlingford but I'm looking forward to reading some of her shorter works and being introduced to her as a writer because I think that if I do enjoy these then I'll definitely try to read as many of her books as possible. I'm not sure if I'll be able to read all 100 anytime soon but we'll try. Not all of them are in print anymore which I think is really sad so I'll try and find as much of her stuff as possible. I'm gonna look through Project Gutenberg online and download some of her books and then see if there's anything else of hers that I might like to read 
but I think that she was such a prolific novelist that there's going to be something in there that I love. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I don't know what all of these are about, so I'll probably film a vlog as I am reading these because I think these are good vlogging books to read. I'm really interested to know what I will think about these. Another one of the challenges this year is to read a book by a female Victorian author and you get a bonus point if it's one you haven't read before. And I think in my first ever Victorian when I wasn't a host I was just joining in I really wanted to read Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon and I never did which I think is a crime I featured it on my TBR and then didn't read it and I've wanted to ever since this is a sensation novel and Mary Elizabeth Braddon was a sensation novelist I love sensation novels so think of things like The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins Wilkie Collins is perhaps the best known Victorian sensation novelist and Sensation novels are known for being very melodramatic. They draw on gothic themes and tropes and have some kind of mystery in them. I think that there is something in them that is kind of entertaining because they are unlike anything published now. You wouldn't really have a novelist writing a sensation novel now because they do draw on maybe the same tropes that we would recognise but they spin them in a different way. And so sometimes they do feel very dramatic in this very over the top way but I think there's something amazing about them and I'm really looking forward to reading this. I have the Penguin English Library edition and I love the way that it's described on the back so I'll read that to you instead of trying to explain what it's about myself. So it says, in this outlandish, outrageous triumph of scandal fiction, a new Lady Audley arrives at the manor, young, beautiful and very mysterious. Why does she behave so strangely? What exactly is the dark secret this seductive outsider carries with her? A huge success in the 19th century, the book revels in an anti-heroine with her good looks and hidden past who embodied perfectly the concerns of the Victorian age with morality and madness. Basically everything I love in a novel. I'm so excited to read this. My challenge for Victoba this year is to think about your favourite Victorian novel and then find a book that was published in the same year but that is less popular now and so I wasn't sure what I was going to choose for my favourite Victorian novel because there were so many that I could choose from. My favourite is probably Shirley but then I thought about Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights and Agnes Grey which were published in 1847 and 1847 was such an amazing year for literature. Not only did the Bronte sisters publish their first works but you also had the release of Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. Anthony Trollope published his first book too but the book that I've chosen for Victoba this year to read is The Children of the New Forest by Captain Marriott, which is a book that I've wanted to read for a really long time, mainly because of this edition. So this is an edition that was given to me, and this book has been in my family since 1926. This is the actual edition, and there's a little presented to sign in the front. So I want to read it for its history. And this is set during the English Civil War, which is a period I I'm really interested in. So much happened during those years and you don't hear a lot about it now unless you are like a hardcore fan of it and want to find out more about it. I don't see lots of novels set then, I don't hear lots of discussion about it and it's something I want to find out more about. So I need to read this. But if I do read this then I really would like to read some other books set during 1847 too. I'm hoping that I might be able to film a video where I read lots of them. So I would quite like to read Anthony Trollope's first book, The McDermott's of Ballycloran, which is set in Ireland. There are some other books too that I found that I have never heard anyone talk about anywhere, never mind on booktube, such as The Henpecked Husband, which I think could be really amazing. I can't find an edition anywhere, I can't find it online to download, so I've had to find a source that has been uploaded and kind of taken pictures of every page on a university website, which is how deep I'm going with my research for my challenge this year. I want to read loads of books that you won't have heard about and you probably won't hear discussed ever again. So that's my challenge, but we'll see how it goes with the rest of my reading. And so if I'm feeling very confident with my reading, then hopefully I'll read a lot for this challenge. But as with all of the challenges, we'll see how it goes. I'm not gonna promise anything at this point. Our group read this year is two of Oscar Wilde's plays. So I kind of want to read all of them in this collection. So this is the 
the importance of being earnest and other plays. This is the Penguin Classics edition, which I've wanted to read for a little while now. I think I bought it at the start of last year. So for our read along this year, we are reading A Woman of No Importance and The Importance of Being Earnest. But in this collection, we also have Lady Windermere's Fan, Salome, An Ideal Husband and A Florentine Tragedy. So I kind of want to read them all and they are plays, so it shouldn't take me ages to read all of these. I have read Oscar Wilde's book. Why can't I remember what it's called? The Picture of Dorian Gray, that's what it's called. I've read The Picture of Dorian Gray and I think it's one of the best novels ever written. I love it so much and I love Oscar Wilde, but I've never read any of his plays. I've never seen them either. So I'm going into these completely fresh, not sure what to expect, but I have a feeling that I am going to adore these. So if you would like to join in with this year's group read, then we have a Goodreads page too. So I'll leave that in the description if you'd like to join. And it would be really great if we could read them together. And then the the final challenge and the final book to show you is the book that I am hoping to read for the challenge to reread a Victorian novel. Now this might be a weird choice, I really wasn't sure what I was going to reread. I kind of wanted to read something like Tess of the D'Urbervilles again because it's been a while since I've read it, but last year I read Valette by Charlotte Bronte and I really didn't feel like I got enough out of this. Even though it was my favourite book of the year, I featured it in my favourite books video. I still didn't feel like I gave it enough time and enough attention. I read it at the end of the year over Christmas and there was a lot going on. And so I definitely want to read at least the last half of it, even if I don't read all of it. And I also want to film a vlog on it, talking about all my feelings towards it. This is about an orphan, Lucy Snow, who moves to Brussels to teach in a boarding school for girls. And perhaps the most interesting thing about this is the psychological effects that going to Brussels has on Lucy. First of all, an amazing name. I'm so happy that Charlotte has a protagonist called Lucy, but also I really related to this. I loved the way that Lucy Snow discusses her feelings towards being away and being in this strange setting with strange people that she doesn't quite get. She feels like a total outsider and there are some really powerful scenes. Even though Shirley is my favorite of Charlotte's books, I think that this is similar to Jane Eyre in the quality of the writing and the tightness of the plot. Shirley maybe isn't the most technical book in the world, but I feel like in terms of how amazing these books are, you have Jane Eyre, Villette, and then Shirley, and then The Professor way down at the bottom. So this was Charlotte's last published book. It was the last book that she wrote and finished before she died. And there's something quite sad in that too. It was the first book she wrote when she was completely on her own. So she wrote the first half of Shirley when her sisters were still alive. And so this was the first book that she wrote where she couldn't share her writing with other people. It was the first book she wrote and published when she was totally alone in the world. And I think you really get this haunting presence coming through in Villette too. I just really want to film a reading vlog on this as well because we didn't read it for the Bronte Book Club last year. And also I just want to be able to document my thoughts on it because I have a lot as I read it. So I would really love to get to this, but if you haven't read it, then please do. It is such an amazing book. So those are the books that I am hoping to read for Victober this year. I've tried to stick to lots of the challenges but we'll see how my reading goes. I feel like we'll see is a recurring theme in this video because I just don't know how the month will pan out yet but I'm hoping that I'll get to read these and I might start a few days ahead of October just so I can make sure I am optimising all of my reading time. I'm going to have to work out a really good reading routine I think. I would love to know in the comments if you are joining in with Victober this year and if so what your TBR looks like, whether you are joining in with the challenges or not. I'd love to know what you are going to read because then I can get recommendations for future Victobers too. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!